I'm David Kaiser, and I've been writing works of history for a very long time. American Tragedy, Kennedy, Johnson, and the Origins of the Vietnam War, came out in 2000 and sold more than 20,000 copies. My next book was The Road to Dallas, The Assassination of John F. Kennedy. It came out in 2007, and it was described in 2013 as the best single work on that controversial topic. In 2014, No End Save Victory described how Franklin Roosevelt led the United States into the Second World War. Today, I want to tell you about this new book, States of the Union, A History of the United States Through Presidential Addresses, from 1789 to 2013. I got the idea of this book through a remarkable work by James McGregor Burns, Packing the Court. Packing the Court is a history of presidents, the Supreme Court, and how the court has changed U.S. history. Reading it, it occurred to me that presidential addresses, and particularly the annual State of the Union address, could become the basis for a political history of the United States. In early 2020, when the pandemic shut down all the libraries, I realized that all the materials that I needed for this book were online, and I decided to see if the idea could work. By the time that I had written a few chapters on the first six presidents, I was sure that it could. States of the Union took three years to complete and is now available at Amazon and all other major online retailers. The book uses presidential addresses to explore the great issues of each administration one by one. Where the issue came from, what the president thought should be done about it, and how it was resolved. Great domestic issues include the slave trade and slavery from Thomas Jefferson through Abraham Lincoln, the economic and political power of the Bank of the United States under Andrew Jackson and his successors, Reconstruction under Andrew Johnson and Ulysses S. Grant, monopolies and trusts for Theodore Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson, and responses to the Great Depression by Hoover and Franklin Roosevelt. Truman, Kennedy, and Lyndon Johnson put civil rights at the top of their agendas, and they have remained important issues ever since. Immigration became controversial in the late 19th and early 20th centuries and has returned to center stage in recent decades. In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan attempted to undo the expansion of the government's economic role that had begun with FDR. Meanwhile, congressional and presidential elections have rendered the verdicts of the American people on the leading issues of the day, and States of the Union records them as well. The book also leads readers through various diplomatic disputes, foreign crises, and wars. Jefferson and Madison's insistence on certain neutral rights at sea brought the nation into conflicts with France and Britain and eventually into the War of 1812. James Monroe defined a new relationship between Europe and the Americas. James K. Polk used outraged rhetoric to win a divided nation over to the Mexican War and the expansion into the Southwest that followed it. In the 1890s and 1900s, William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt explicitly brought the United States into the ranks of the world's imperialist nations with interventions and annexations in Cuba, Hawaii, the Philippines, and elsewhere. Woodrow Wilson brought the U.S. into the First World War to create a new international order after his attempts to end it had failed. Franklin Roosevelt in 1937 began warning that new wars in Asia and Europe would inevitably spread to the Western Hemisphere and eventually oversaw an unprecedented mobilization to allow the U.S. and its allies to defeat the Axis. Every president from Truman through Bush I accepted new responsibilities to fight communism during the Cold War, leading to wars in Korea and Vietnam. And every president since the first Bush has also spoken of the United States' unique, indispensable role as the world's only superpower, often with fateful consequences. The presidents discuss many forgotten episodes of U.S. history. 
In addition to bluntly arguing for removing southern Indian tribes across the Mississippi, Andrew Jackson introduced the issue of economic inequality under capitalism into our national life and called every year of his presidency for the abolition of the Electoral College. U.S. Grant and several of his successors waged a long political and even military campaign to force the Mormons in Utah Territory to give up theocracy and polygamy. Pierce and Buchanan wanted to annex Cuba, and Grant negotiated a treaty to annex the Dominican Republic, which the Senate refused to ratify. I was very surprised by much of what I learned writing this book, and I'm sure readers will be surprised by a great many things as well. The most effective presidents all excelled at putting the events of their time in a much broader historical context. The whole book revolves around a key question put forward by George Washington in his first annual message. The preservation of the sacred fire of liberty and the destiny of the Republican model of government, he said, are justly considered, perhaps, as deeply as finely staked on the experiment instructed to the hands of the American people. Washington's successors talked frequently about the qualities needed to make democracy work. Lincoln insisted in his first year in office that the success of secession would doom democratic government, not only in the U.S. but all over the world, since it would have proven too weak to defend itself. FDR and the Cold War presidents cast foreign affairs as a worldwide struggle between dictatorship and democracy, and presidents since Reagan have embraced the mission of spreading democracy worldwide. In the last 10 years, our democracy at home has faced its most serious domestic challenges since the Civil War. States of the Union reacquaints readers with our past as we face a very uncertain future again. And I hope many of you will be moved to take a look at it.